When you looked at that horrible woman last night, you said, I don't think so. I don't think so. She would not be my first choice, that I can tell you. Man. You don't know. That would not be my first choice. Donald Trump saying that at least one of the women coming out against him isn't attractive enough for him to have groped on an airplane. Nine women have now accused the Republican nominee of unwanted touching or kissing. Since a leaked tape revealed him talking about grabbing women, are more to come? Does it matter to voters? Joining me now, Paul Begala, CNN commentator and senior advisor to a Clinton, pro-Clinton super PAC, Republican Congresswoman Renee Elmers of North Carolina, Alice Stewart, uh, CNN political commentator and former communications director for Senator Ted Cruz, and Bakari Sellers, CNN political commentator and Hillary Clinton supporter. Um, let me start with you, uh, Congresswoman. Um, Donald, I, I guess the, the, the point of saying that these women are not telling the truth and these charges are false is one thing. Saying look at her, there's no way I would ever grope someone like, that looked like that. I mean, I'm guessing that that's not what you would recommend to him. No, absolutely not. And, you know, first I'll just say the, the issue of groping, when we're talking about this issue, this, this is sexual assault. So we're accusing a man of sexual assault here. And I'm not going to debate who's telling the truth, but it is a she said, he said situation. What I will say is that Just to he, correct you, I'm sorry. So she, his, said, she said, she said, she said, she said, she said, she said, yeah. she said, she said, she said situation. Well, but let, let's, <laughs> let's, let's be fair. We have the same situation with the Clintons, both with Bill Clinton, of course, and then of, of Hillary Clinton defending and attacking those women as well. You know what, let's move on. If we're going to talk about the issues that affect women in this country, let's talk about the fact that there are two million more women who are in poverty today than when Barack Obama took office. 3.5 million more people altogether. Let's talk about the, uh, the issues that affect women. Let's talk about health care for women. Let's talk about how poverty plays a role in cardiovascular disease, which is the number one killer of women and is also the most for women of color. Let's talk about the real issues moving forward and let's move on. I mean, we would like to talk about the real issues moving forward. It's not as if Hillary Clinton began this debate. In fact, if you remember just last week at the, at the Republican debate, you had a quote unquote press conference where, where Donald Trump trotted out uh, the alleged accusers of, of Bill Clinton and sat there and wanted to talk about it. And it's as if we have to believe Bill Clinton's accusers when they say something, but we do not believe the accusers of Donald Trump. That's first. And second, Hillary Clinton, I mean, it, it, the audacity of some people to tell Hillary Clinton how she should treat the women with whom her husband cheated with, I think is just beyond the pale. Hillary Clinton's on the ballot, not Bill Clinton. And I'm, I, we will have a discussion, and Democrats will have a discussion with you all day long about women's rights, about reproductive rights. Let's get there. But it's really hard to get there when we're having this discussion that Donald Trump keeps digging the hole for. I, I think it's also important to, as you say, Bill Clinton is not on the ballot. And even as a Republican, it's difficult to grasp the, the reality of the fact. We have the Access Hollywood tape where Trump is bragging about doing uh, despicable things to women and then followed by what I view as credible, living, breathing examples of exactly what he's talking about. So it's difficult to, to, to accept his denials in that. And it's just not defensible. If I were uh, advising him, I would say, look, get off of this topic. This is not a winning topic. Go back to what helped you win the Republican nomination. Talk about your plans, which he has a good plan for jobs and the economy. Talk about those issues and, and, and drive that. And don't continue to talk about this other topic. It's, it's not a winning issue you're, for either one of them. You're still going to vote for Donald Trump. You're still planning on voting for Donald I'm a, Trump. I'm a Republican. I'm going to support the Republicans. So, and it looks as though, let's just, let's just uh, show this, uh, this tape, um, I mean, this, uh, this graphic. In this new poll, do Trump's comments on this tape make you more or less likely to vote for him? No difference, 63%, less likely, 35%, more likely, 1%, <laughs> and no opinion, 1%. <laughs> I guess they, they pulled Gerald, Jared Fogel in, uh, in prison. Uh, but uh, but, but what, what do you th what, what's your reaction to that? It's a couple of things. First, 68% in the same poll, this is the ABC News Washington Post poll, 68% uh, say that, in fact, they believe that Mr. Trump made unwanted sexual advances. I think for the reason Alice states, the, the most damning witness here is Donald Trump. Correct. Who said he did these things, and now accounts have come forward with contemporaneous co uh, corroboration. But Paul, let me ask you. I mean, the, the fact is, and there was this piece in the New York Times saying, the first major party women nominee is, is pretty quiet on this, and one cannot help but conclude that it's because she knows that there are credible charges against her husband. Well, I, I would say stay tuned. She raises, she raised similar issues directly with Donald Trump in the, in the first debate. Right, and she yeah. talked about Alicia Machado, which was very different. It wasn't sexual advance, I want to be clear. But he was mocking uh, a beauty queen's 
weight, uh, which a lot of people found really offensive. So she did raise it in the first debate. I, I expect you'll probably see some of this in the third debate. But the truth is, you know, Napoleon said never interrupt your opponent when he's destroying himself. Uh, and so I, first, I wouldn't want her to, as a, I don't advise her, you know I advise yeah, her yeah. super PAC. I wouldn't want her to jump in the middle of this because that gives partisans on the Republican side who are falling off a place to hang on if Hillary's in the story. What about Bill? Right. And there's no better advocate for Hillary on these issues than Michelle Obama. I think 100 years from now, I think Hillary will win, and that'll be a big deal in the history books, the first woman president. Michelle Obama's speech will be one of the things people study 100 years from now. It was that powerful. And that's far better for Hillary than for her to run around personally and talk about it. C Congresswoman, let me just ask you, um, removing uh, the politics of this for a second, sure. what the issue of sexual assault and the issue of women coming forward, I have been surprised to hear from so many women friends and so many people in my family, yes, this happens all the time. Um, not, not as a commentator, sure. but just as a human being. Don't you yeah. think this is a moment for our country? As a woman, as a mother, um, I, I will tell you, and, and as a nurse, uh, that over 60% of sexual assaults go unreported. So that gets back to the issue here. Why now? I understand if these things happen. You're questioning I'm not, the timing of I'm when not out? questioning what these women are saying, but I do believe that we have due process in this country. And three weeks before an election, how can this man defend himself? That's, that's so let's not pretend. But you also said another comment that I found was interesting. You said women in this country, their bodies and their reproductive rights. That is right out of the Democratic playbook. We as women care about every issue. It is not just about our bodies. It is not just but about I will our bodies. I will let I will